In this video I will be making this end plate support. I must rebuild my cell because it's leaking and obviously it was only a prototype so I will use this. I got a few pieces of thick polypropylene sheet I will use as an end plate. Here are some steel square construction profiles that will compress the whole cell together. The idea is to create H shape support so the compression will be as even as possible. After measuring where the hose connections will be, I found I will have to offset two connecting profiles from center. But that should be no problem. So it should look like this. As cutting saw is cooled by oil, it's good idea to clean these profiles by soap water, otherwise a lot of smoke will be produced during welding. I'm trying to clean the edges and getting rid of the cutting chips. So paper towel is pretty effective in cleaning the surface, but these edges are pain in the ass. I tried to use file but gave up pretty quickly. However, I have a held hand table grinder. In case you wonder what the fuck is that. Well, this little monster, it's a handheld, because it will travel away from you if it isn't. And it's so underpowered that it's not worth mounting it anywhere. Also, after 10 minutes of grinding, it's so hot that it smells of burning magnet wire. But yeah, it gets the job done. Okay, so let's set up for some brazing work. These rods worked for me, so I will use them. Focus, you fuck! Now, here we go. I don't know whether they are available in the US or outside of EU, but I guess that any rods with flux will work. Anyways, here are some stats. So, working temperature in metric, chemical composition and EN barcode. If you want to scan it. And smaller EN. What about no fucking battles, huh? Okay, so let's start our generator. Hmm, it's running at 500 watts. That's no good. Well, it's true that somehow I got my electrolyte contaminated with something. I guess I will have to change it. As you can see, it's brown. Right now, I don't know why. I was experimenting with ethanol in bubbler and it may somehow contaminate the electrolyte. But the only thing I can do is to save a sample and change it. Uh, one thing is for sure. Either it's from PVC tubes, maybe dissolved plasticizer or pigment, or it's from rubber separators, which are EPDM and should be resistant to hydroxides. Also, here's some strange material in the holes. Okay, so electrolyte is changed and I tried to brace this, but I found it rather more difficult than test on stainless steel. Also, that aluminium board gets quite hot, so I will do this in vice. I just take these pieces and move them to vice then. Well, from camera movement I guess that hearing protection is in place. Here I am changing my strategy a bit so I can melt the flux first, but it's not very effective. But, yeah, it's quite doable. By the way, at this point my work is very inefficient, as for this joint I use the whole stick. So I made this little chisel file to clean areas I am working on. It was quite pain to do this, but I can see that it helps a lot to do so. So now I am testing if brazing this side is better, because then I would have to do a lot less flipping of the workpiece. I was thinking to not do it this way, because I want this side to be as flat as possible. But yeah, it, this is the way.
Okay, I will at least take this side so it's quite symmetrical and do next three pieces from top. Well, that's quite big tech, but... And in the end it's very shitty joint. I cleaned the edges prior to brazing like this, so it is easier to brace and it saves a lot of time. In fact, this piece will be done in 20 minutes instead of, say, 45 for previous one. Also, now I can position the parts in prior to joining them, so I am not taking the risk that they will move. And I also omitted part in the middle, because it is not contributing to anything. Now I will zoom closer to the workpiece so you can see what I am doing here. Okay, so here I am also spreading the flux first. Later I found that this is not really needed, but as I say, I am not a welder. So, still gaining experience. But the way this flux is behaving is quite an indicator that metal is hot enough so I can begin to braze it. There was quite big beat, so I am trying to get it back on the stick so the piece is as flat as possible. So, the first side is complete. Maybe I should buy some gloves so I can touch it without burning, instead of doing this. Shouldn't I? Okay, so let's get the next side done. This time I won't clean the surface, even if it's discolored. And it seems like it's okay to do so. I mean... Yeah. If you really want to, you can give it a lick with acid, but... Okay, so now I am also not going to spread flux on the surface, but I will preheat the piece until there is red hot spot. After that, I can proceed as usual. Well, now you can see that this cutting fluid is creating quite a lot of smoke. Okay, one more close-up and for the last time. So, here I'm printing the pieces. I will do a few tacks with the rod, just to get flux here. And this is only because I can see how it's changing viscosity, so I get idea what the temperature is about. Then when the stick sweats the metal, I am heating the joint directly, so heat spreads evenly. Also I am pointing the torch in very slight angle from perpendicular. Well, now it actually may be even 45 degrees. Then when the bead is flat, I can touch the surface with the rod right next to the joint, so it is advancing and it continues. I am also pressing this rod a little bit, and rotating it each time so it's covered with flux at all sides. And at this point I am using maybe half of the rod for one side, compared to the whole rod for one joint, for the first attempts. When I don't like the shape of the bead, I simply heat it so it flattens, but, but it looks like zinc is oxidizing quite quickly and, and forms a non-meltable layer. It's quite similar to tin soldering of electronics, when after some time tin converts completely into slag, 
so you can clean your soldering iron tip and use a lot of flux so you can wet it with fresh tin, if you understand me. Okay, so after this last piece I'm going to brace mounting nuts. First I have to brace some washers. They are zinc plated, but this doesn't seem to be a problem. Also it's interesting that these brace joints doesn't look like they are contracting a lot. At least compared to what welding does. Really, I haven't seen any movement at all. Before I will be bracing nuts, let me drill some holes for compression screws. It was easier to mark holes now, so I will do it now. This is not very interesting process, but here is it anyway. I am using very cheap drill press, so I am pre-drilling holes with small drill. This way holes are also more precisely positioned. Not that I layer them precisely, but anyway. After big holes are done, chamfer the edges so they are nice. And repeat 4 times for each support. Okay, so let me brace. These nuts! <laughs> I have attached some bolts to them so they are concentric with washers. Also, they are providing some weight so bracing is easier. However, I was stupid enough and bought only 4 washers so I have to use bigger ones that I found here. This explains why there are no bolts here. I can be less precise with their position. And yeah, that's it for now. Next thing to do will be cleaning up flux, painting, making hose connection ports and finalizing the cell modules.